Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna walk through the basics of creating different types of charts or graphs in Power Apps. So whether you wanna create a more complicated dashboard or you just wanna show a couple of pie charts or something similar, basically I'll walk through all of that in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, we are in Power Apps and we have a couple of options. You can choose to make your app from scratch or you can start from an Excel file. It is entirely up to you how you prefer to do this. But the general idea here is you'll start with your data connection, doesn't really matter. And you can scroll through and choose the different connection options. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna choose a blank tablet layout. But if you want, you can connect various data sources. It's a very similar process, whether you wanna use a static Excel file that's just uploaded or a SharePoint list. Now <clears throat> we have our screen here. I'm not a huge fan of some of these default options as far as the way that it kind of forces things into place, but it's entirely up to you. The idea here is if we just wanted to start out with some basic content, you can do that very, very easy, or you can do it from a template. Now, when we go through, you'll see we have all of our options over here. We have our inputs and displays, which you can use to build your graphs if you're interested. But the idea here is we have tons of different options that you're gonna need to actually build out your app. Then we're gonna go to charts. So charts is where the various options are housed. We have three to choose from that are non-Power BI options. So we have our column chart, our line chart, and our pie chart. Now, one thing to note, when you first select one of these options, the UI is not very intuitive as far as moving things around. So you would think now that you have this item on the page and you have it selected, when you select and move something, it's going to move all of it. But the majority of the time, it does not actually do that. So you'll see right here, I'm moving everything because I've selected the item from the border which selects everything inside but if i click here for example it's very common when you select it to click on the chart and then only move the chart now you'll see here the entire container has moved but it's only moving this one component instead of all of it collectively so when you want to move the container you have to make sure that you're selecting the container don't just grab the chart and move it so we have a couple of different choices here. This first one is pretty straightforward as far as being a bar chart, but you do have some advanced formatting options that you can work with. But we're gonna go ahead and add in our line chart as well, and we'll move that over here. And then we're gonna add in our pie chart. The reason I'm gonna build all three at the same time is I'm going to build all of them from an individual or a singular option or chart. So the data for this is basically just going to be our static Excel file. So you have your options right here as far as <clears throat> each chart type, and you can select inside and change the title. And then when you select various components, your properties window is going to populate over here to, for example, show labels. Or if you need to add in additional formatting for things like do you want this explode function? So when I select this again, you'll see we can go to advanced and scroll through, choose a bunch of different options. So if I choose 100 for explode, you'll see now what that looks like. So you have a ton of different functions that you can work with just by selecting very, very small things. So we have all of these items. When you select a given chart, you'll see that we have a couple of things here. Now, when you select the container, you're going to have minimal choices, but once you select the component, that's where you'll see that the items are going to be pulled from whatever you specify. So this is starting with a sample chart built into Power Apps. So in this case, <clears throat> uh, you have a couple of different ways to edit the chart or the graph itself. So when you look and we click on the graph, so you'll see we have an on select and all of these other choices, but you'll see that we have a column chart sample. When we select this one, we have a line chart sample, and as you guessed, pie chart sample. 
So if we select one of these options, you can then scroll through and see all of the different features or functions that you can work with, such as markers or the on select, the content itself. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you want to modify. You can select it and then pull down this menu. Now you have a couple of different ways to connect your data to this. For example, our items are this column chart sample. Now, if you want to see what this is, regardless of where you are in the app. Now, wherever you are in the app, I find it easier just to add a separate little text component or something like that, just to <clears throat> kind of help you mess with certain things. So when we select this button, we can go up here and then you can actually type in this column chart sample. If you want to see what that actual column chart sample looks like. So then you can click here and you'll see the different items or options for this. So now we've expanded on and we know, okay, that's what that table looks like. If you want, you can modify that in the application, or if you want, you can actually go and build out your own. So you'll notice as you're going through here, you have all of these additional tools and things of that nature. So you can view everything but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add data. I'm going to go to connectors and then I'm going to see all and I'm going to import from Excel. And I have another video that walks through how to do this, which is very simple. You just format your content as a table. And once you have it, you have the ability to then go over here to your display or advanced options and pull whatever you need to from that. So for example, if we want, we can start typing in table and you'll see table one appears. And now all of a sudden you'll see our bar chart is updated based on table one. And you can do the exact same thing over here. And once more over here. And when you do this, <clears throat> you then would have to choose what do you want to be your label and what do you want to be the actual series? So you'll see right here, obviously, this is not the best way to organize it. But if we want our label to be the project, so the project names for the file I have are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you'll see we have made the series the numbers of deliverables. So I have now set this up to where it shows the number of deliverables per project. Now, in this case over here, the... I can do the exact same thing. So if I want to organize this by number of deliverables, or if I want to organize it maybe instead by status, and then the series will be the number of deliverables. And then I can go over here and do basically the same thing. You choose whichever options, for example, if I wanted to organize by project and number of deliverables, I can now do that. And then I've created kind of like a sample dashboard. Now, the other idea you have here is you can actually create your graphs from data that users are actually working with in the application itself. All right, so I've gone ahead and made a couple of changes, basically adding in some input fields. Now, I'm going to walk you through what I've done now. So the first thing is first, you would choose options based on whatever input type you want. For example, if you want a date picker, then you can select that option and then you can make the output of the date picker one of the options for the graph. Now, in this case, what I'm using is text inputs. So when you select a text input, it'll appear right here. And then you can see the name of the input, which you'll use for the next step. So in this case, I have added text input one, one underscore one, one underscore two, and one underscore three. Then I've kept this update graphs button. Now, when we select each of these, nothing has really changed outside of I'm using the data that the user inputs here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over what I've done. I have chosen to start out with this collect function. Now, I'll put a link to this in the description, but this shows a bunch of different functionality in Power Apps. So we have Collect, and then we have Clear Collect. Now I'm gonna show you how this works, and then we'll walk through it together. So when I click Play, or Preview, you'll see that we have the data here. And as I click Update, 
it continues to add data, but it doesn't remove the previous data. Now, if I click on update graphs and I choose to put clear in front so that it says clear collect, now when I click update, it basically wipes it out the temporary graph and then starts with the data. So if we click on update and then change these values, it'll change as expected. So that is everything that we have as far as creating that temporary graph. Now let's look at actually creating it. So this is the text that we've used and I'll walk through create, like basically making this text from scratch. If you type in clear and then you type in collect, at this point you would use open parentheses and specify the name of the graph. Now in this case, we're creating one. So I just called it graph one. So you just type in graph one, comma space. Now from here, we have a very specific way that we have to type this out. So we have an open bracket and the static text option semicolon space. Now the text input is the value that we want. So the idea here is if you're typing this out from scratch, you would type in text and you need the input that you're interested in. So if I want text input one, then I can use that. Now, the next thing is you have to specify the data type. So we would put dot text. Now, often you may need to specify dot value or dot whatever it is. So when you're going through, you'll see that we have input 1.2. If I hit period, it'll basically default to show you what your option is here. So the idea is it's just going to say, okay, we're using text. Now, what I've done over here is I've specified an integer. So let's go into this next. So what we have so far is clear collect. And we've said, okay, graph one, I'm going to make this graph or use an existing graph in your application. Then we put a comma and then in brackets is basically going to be our first portion of data. So we have options, semicolon, space, and this is static text. So this will just always be option. And then whatever that text is. So if you want, you could put option one, and then that would be what would display here. Now, comma, space. Here we're going to put quantity, semicolon, space, and then we're going to specify integer, which is int, and we're going to put open parentheses, close parentheses, and then whatever our value is. So in this, in this case, we're specifying text input one. Now, because I'm basically creating a function outside of a function, it's showing some errors. So I'll delete this now and show you exactly what we have. So we have our clear collect graph and then the brackets house our first option. So we have option semicolon space and then quantity semicolon space. Now the quantity has an integer. So we're just putting INT and then we're specifying text input one, which is this one right here. And then you'll see when you select, so we have blue is one underscore two, which is this label. We have this pinkish purplish color, which is here, and the orange color, which is here. So the idea is we just specify, okay, this is what I want the text to be. You can put it in quotes if you wanna specify static text. You have multiple options, so it's entirely up to you as to how you do that. But what we're doing is we're just using these four input fields, and then we're using this graph option. Now we're gonna select each graph, open up our properties under advanced. I'll just delete everything here and you can specify with items, where are they coming from? When you type in graph, you may notice that nothing comes up, but when you actually create it now, or when you type it in completely, you'll see it's now appearing here. And we're choosing the label as the option, the series as the quantity because when we created our graph, our option was text and our quantity was a number. So we're going to literally just make that same change to each of these, type in graph one, and then set the labels up, type in graph one and set the labels up. So now when we click on our graph option, if we click on preview, 
and we decided to make this, let's just say quarter one. And we could make this quarter two. And click update. You'll see that now all of a sudden we have these values reflected here. And if you're interested and you wanted to make this kind of like a real-time visualization for people, you can just use the collect function. So we'll click on play. And then you'll see right here, we can then choose to add quarter three and then quarter four. And then you could adjust this however you see fit. Click update. And now we'll see those values change. And then we have quarter one, two, three, four. So you'll see exactly how it is on each of these different areas. Now you have multiple ways to do this, but at this point I've showed you how to use your data within your app and the data within the application that a user is inputting. Now, again, if you want, you can just click on each of these graphs. And then when you choose the items, you can just choose whatever your data source is. To add a data source, you can just go to data and then choose add data. You can create a table within Power Apps here by choosing new table and adding it manually or however you prefer. Or you can add your data source. And then when you go to your options, this is where you would type in whatever the name of your table is. For example, pie chart. If you choose the pie chart table and then you update the different options here, then it's going to basically show you over here whatever that data source has. So in this case, pie chart is the actual table built into the app. But if you wanted, you could pull it in from whatever your data source is as long as you're typing in with the correct name. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.